G'day, guys and gal. You know shit is going down when Majorkill uploads two videos in two days. That's like two full days of just sitting down in front of my computer, doing research, attempting to be funny, and wondering if people will notice that I sometimes forget to include Timmy in videos. That is time I could have spent sitting at my computer, contemplating my own mortality, or looking at my terrible paint job on my Eldar Titan. Shout out to JumpStrat7 for this video idea. I think he is right. The best way to overcome any obstacle is with a tank. Hence, I'll be using the topic of Imperial tanks today to continue to wage my petty yet fun subscriber war against One Mind Syndicate. Hit subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. We taking these boys down. The Imperium has a lot of tanks, like a lot, more than I was expecting, but we've come this far and mama didn't raise no bitch. Some tanks shoot far, some tanks shoot short, some are named after legendary heroes of the Imperium, and some are named after your local priest. But the one thing they all have in common is that if you get into a car crash with one, no amount of insurance will be able to put your spine back in your body. Before we get started, and this isn't a sponsored message, but Neckbeardia has launched his and his woman's minis, which are pretty sweet, and they're perfect if you wanted to use them for a D&D campaign or, you know, as an exotic anal bead. Necky has been a good friend of the channel and helped me out massively with the Major Kill minis, so link to his models will be in the description. Today we'll go over each of the Imperium's tanks. Because I'm not boring and don't like making two hour videos, I'm not going to fine comb through every single variant of tank. If you are that much of a tank nerd, then just go do your own research. Do I look like your teacher? We will be talking about the tank's specialties, strengths, and a bit about their lore, when to use them, and how much boom boom they pack in. Let's get into it. Going by alphabetical order, we have the Astraus up first. The Astraus is a newer tank used by the Primaris, which basically means it just shits on most other tanks through virtue of GW wanting people to buy it. It's bloody huge and packs a serious punch. Oh yeah, and it levitates using Gravtech, cause why not? The tank, just like Primaris, is also subtly heretical, as its design was taken from an STC which has been kept from Mars for reasons which I just assume is the Inquisition being paranoid as always. This beast of a tank has its own void shields, as well as twin linked macro accelerator cannons, which I have no idea what those are, but they sound cool. They also come with las rippers or plasma eradicators, as well as las cannons or heavy bolters. It's got a lot, alright? They're used as a Primaris tank of choice and excel at taking down aircraft. Next up is the Atlas, which is probably the most peaceful and pacifistic tank on this list, despite still having heavy bolters. The Atlas is a super tanky tow truck, which basically rolls into a battlefield and tows damaged tanks out of battle and to safety. It can be modified with shit like smoke launchers and searchlights, as well as hunter killer missile launchers. Okay to aid it in being the best support vehicle a man could ask for. After the friendly Atlas, we have the handy Aurochs, which is more or less an extremely armored Uber. The Aurochs was designed to ferry soldiers to the front lines, drop them off, and then wave at them goodbye as they get mowed down by a huge orc army or torn apart by Tyranids. Not much more to say here other than it's an infantry transport vehicle and really excels in safely delivering the cannon fodder. Next up is the Bane Wolf, which while it sounds like some kind of advanced canine hunting device, is more or less just a hellhound that uses a chem cannon instead of an inferno cannon. Now while this technically goes against my rule of not delving into tank variants, a chem cannon is a big deal and laughs in the face of war crimes. It basically shoots out an acidic liquid, which quickly and painfully melts through your skin, flesh and bone. It can also burn through ceramide and makes for an extremely grotesque way to purge your enemies. As such, crews of Bane Wolves are often avoided by other guardsmen and are only deployed when the Imperium is in a shitty mood. The Bane Wolf is the only tank that uses a chem cannon, and that's for good reason. Next up is the Bane Blade, which while it sounds like it's one of those spinny combat discs you played with as a kid, is actually a fuck off massive super heavy tank used by the guardsmen. It's a very old tank with a very old design, but considering it still shits on everyone's tits, the Imperium still froths it. It can be used to hold the line against impossible odds or break through an impenetrable wall. It's a trump card for most situations and is one of the heaviest non-Titan hitters the Imperium has. At a minimum, it requires a 10 person crew and each crewman is an expert in their field. A notable version of the Bane Blade is the Bane Hammer, which fires a shell into the ground that burrows deep and then explodes, causing a shockwave which then creates a mini earthquake. 
This has made the Bane Haber an absolute godsend against Tyranids, as the Nids love to bum rush your tits. One shot from a Bane Hammer can knock thousands of Tyranids over in their tracks and severely slows down their charge, buying a lot of time for the Imperium armies to shoot them up. The Bane Hammer is also great for offensive action, as one shot from it can topple kilometers of trenches, barbed wire, and other light fortifications. Now onto something a bit more high budget, we have the Kaleidus, which is a floating grav tank unique to the Custodes. The anti-grav properties allow this tank to be surprisingly agile on the battlefield, like literally everything the Custodes use. If there was a phrase to describe the Golden Banana Boys, it would definitely have to be surprisingly agile. This shiny death dealer uses a double-barreled Iliatius accelerator cannon and twin-linked Lastrum bolt cannons, which I once again have no fucking clue what they do, but I'm sure it would ruin your day if you got shot by them. Now we have the Capital Imperialis, which is more or less just those big ass Tatooine vehicles that the Jawas use. Its purpose is to act as a mobile command center where different commanders can meet and strategize while being close to the front lines. Now we have the Centaur, which is the second support tank on this list. Whilst the Atlas serves to remove damaged vehicles from the battlefield, the Centaur is a lot more versatile, being able to transport artillery, soldiers, and weaponry, whilst also being able to run on almost any kind of environmentally raping fuel. It has multiple gun mount positions and is more or less what a dog would be if a dog could be a tank, if that makes sense. Now onto something a bit more spicy, the Cerebus Heavy Tank Destroyer, which is as fun as it sounds. While it is a variation of the Spartan Assault Tank, which sounds awesome as well, the Cerebus distinguishes itself by being a class of tank used to carry and test out recovered Dark Age of Technology weapons. As such, these beasts were diverse and rare. Even their power sources were experimental and used some form of magic to help them run. Some things aren't supposed to last forever though, so it's important to enjoy them while you can. The Cerebus was just one of those things. Onto the Cyclops, damn the Imperium has a boner for Greek mythology. They probably should have just called this tank the Jihadist, as it's more or less just a remote control armored bomb on wheels. You get the remote, drive it into the enemy position and press detonate. Boom goes the enemy. God is great. Now we have the Death Hammer, which while it has a cool name, has basically no lore behind it other than being a shitty version of the Bane Blade. So yeah, fuck the Death Hammer I guess. Now onto the Demos, which has a ton of different variations and is the go-to mobile assault tank for the Space Marine chapters. Its cannon has a 180 degree firing arc and it's covered in other support weapons and has a cheeky little death rake at the front for when you feel like taking a joyride through a platoon of heretics. Next up we have the Destroyer Tank Hunter, which has one cool and blatantly obvious purpose, hunt down and destroy enemy tanks. It uses a single weapon called the Heavy Laser Destroyer that can one-shot almost any tank. Fuck yeah! However, the knowledge required to create the Heavy Laser Destroyers has been more or less lost, and the Imperial Guard are very careful to take care of these bad boys. Send them in, laser the enemy tank, give the Destroyer Tank Hunter a kiss to please the machine's spirit, and then whisk her back to safety. Easy as. Now we have the Exorcist, and before you're like, that's not right, how does a tank perform an exorcism? Technically, if you blow up someone who is possessed by a demon, they have been exorcised. Used exclusively by the Sisters of Battle, these old hardy killing machines are armed with the Exorcist Missile Launcher, which fires a bunch of missiles. I don't think it really needs much more of an explanation than that, you can clearly see what it does. Next up in our string of misleading names, we have the Falcon, which while sounds like something airborne or swift, is actually a super heavy tank destroyer, and one of the best tanks the Imperium used to pack. I say used to, because like most of the fun tanks on this list, they have all been destroyed and nobody knows how to rebuild them. Doesn't the Imperium realize that all you need to do to rebuild and improve upon ancient lost technology is to just throw a wrench at Belsarius' call and tell him the gist of what you want? The man is pretty much just a mechanical hentai version of Tony Stark. I guess the catch to that technique is that whatever he builds can only be used by Primaris. The Falcon is twin-linked volcano cannons, which is just silly, and were noted for their ability to kill titans with ease. Nice. A common theme with a lot of these tanks is that they're based on only the design of 4 or 5 templates. Tsk tsk, getting lazy there GW. 
Funny to think that an empire which spans over a million worlds would only have five tank templates. The Fell Blade follows this rule. It's basically a Bane Blade, but way better. Better armor, unique technology, and a fatter cannon. And yeah, once again these things are rare as because they're a bitch to make. As the saying goes, there's always a bigger fish, and there's always a bigger tank. Hence now we have the Gorgon, which is the largest land transport vehicle the Imperium has for their guardsmen, able to carry 50 brave soldiers to their death at startling efficiency. Whilst being able to carry so many men is good, they have a ton of shortcomings, such as being slow as shit, having no weapons, and being kind of ugly. It's more so used to transport troops through dangerous terrain that's under fire or has a bunch of landmines. Once the troops are close enough to either bayonet charge, because apparently that's still a thing, then they eject and go for it, or they just jump into a small and more maneuverable transport for the final stretch. Next up is the Griffin Tank, which is a light and fast siege tank. Whilst it fulfills a solid niche as being maneuverable and having a high rate of fire, the Imperium is moving more towards the trusty philosophy of the bigger the better, hence we're seeing less and less of this tin can rolling around. It's armed with its Griffin Heavy Mortar, which packs a surprisingly big punch for its size. It's been a little while since we had a war crime tier tank on this list, but here is the Hellhound, a tank that is covered in flamethrowers and knows how to use them. An obvious flaw to having a flamethrower in tank form is that if someone hits it in the right spot, or the wrong spot if you happen to be in it or near it, it will explode violently. Ironically, the crews of the Hellhounds are also all pyromaniacs, who modify the tanks to be more volatile for the shits and giggles, so often these Hellhound detonations are their own fault. How does one deal with enemy aircraft I hear nobody ask? Simple, the Hydra tank. These are the main anti-aircraft tanks used by the Imperium, however they also make for great anti-infantry tanks if you tilt the cannons down. Like no shit, look at those autocannons. Another sister of battle exclusive DLC tank is the Immolator. It's like the Hellhound, but for chicks, and does the same thing. Burns heretics and is a little bit less prone to exploding randomly. Space Marines and Guardsmen rarely use the same tanks. After all, a Space Marine can't fit into most Guardsmen vehicles. Hence the Impulsar is the Space Marine's troop transport, being able to quickly and safely take up to 10 Marines to the front lines using its Impulsion technology. Name checks out. They're also covered in guns because, you know, of course they are. The next tank on this list is very unique and only used by the Sisters of Silence, the Charon. It's designed to be an anti psycho stealth tank which can hold up to 12 sisters as they go around chasing, murdering and terrorizing rogue psychers. It even looks pretty bloody scary and has a ton of cheeky weapons on board. Next up we have the first Mechanicus only tank on this list, the Krios. Considering the Mechanicus build 95% of all tanks in the Imperium, it's only fair that they get their own. And yeah, it, lo it looks pretty mechanicus y and shoots lightning, which is pretty cool. Probably the most common Space Marine tank is the Land Raider, and holy shit, it has a lot of variants. It's like the go-to mass-produced death machine that any Astartes chapter loves. It's the ultimate versatile tank, and can be specialized in over a dozen different ways, and see excessive variations available to it. They're incredibly well made and extremely durable, which is likely the reason why they have such powerful machine spirits. There have been times where a Land Raider crew had been killed, but the machine spirit inside it was so goddamn angry that it self-pilots the Land Raider and continues killing shit. These huge tanks are more akin to mobile fortresses than simple tanks, and they get the job done. The Astartes have their Land Raiders, but the Guardsmen have their Lehman Rust battle tanks. The Lehman Rust tanks have more bloody variations than the Land Raiders, but the gist of them is that they are gigantic, straightforward tanks. They don't use fancy tech or voodoo to get the job done, they are just thick and chonky. It's named after the Primarch of the Space Wolves, as he and his sons were the ones that rediscovered the STC, as well as the fact that the Lehman Rust battle tank can run off any form of combustible fuel, just like the Space Wolf Primarch. The demand for Bane Blades was high, no shit. But considering the effort required to build them, as well as Mars being a bunch of stingy bitches and not telling other Forge worlds how to make them, the supply just wasn't there. Hence a new tank rose to popularity, the recently discovered Macarius tank, named after Alexander the Great in space, 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 space. This tank acted as the tier in between a Lehman Rust and a Bane Blade, and was favoured by the newly emerged Death Corps of Krieg. Malkador the Sigilite was a scholar, governor, and a wise wizard. As such, did the Imperium name a library after him, or a school, or anything to do with magic? 
No, they named an old tank after him. Sure, okay. The Malkador assault tank was the main tank in the Imperium at the start of the Great Crusade. It was mass produced until newer and better STCs were discovered and allowed for things such as Land Raiders and Lehman Ross tanks. There are still a few lurking around, but they just don't really match up to today's standard anymore. Oh, holy shit, there are so many tanks. Ugh, let's keep going. Onto the Manticore now, which is like a standard Chimera bodied tank, other than the fact that it has four gigantic super deadly rockets on it. Once those rockets are fired, it's pretty useless for the rest of the battle unless you feel like running over the bad guys. It takes hours of extremely careful reloading by tech priests and specialist servitors to get these guys operational again, so either they are effective in a 10 minute battle or a 10 hour battle, not much in between. Onto the biggest and naughtiest troop transport, we have the Mastodon, which could carry up to 40 space marines straight into the thick of battle, and was reasonably well armed for the job. Generally, it would wait for a hole to be knocked into the wall, before then shoving its girthy shaft into the gaping hole, allowing for maximum penetration. Yes, I did just sexualize a tank, what are you gonna do about it? Speaking of sexualizing things that shouldn't be, we now have the Predator tank, Basically, the Space Marine version of the Lehman Ras. They act as a standard battle tank, going in, shooting bitches, getting shot, and lurking around kindergartens. It's a highly versatile tool and widely available to all Space Marine chapters. Well, most of them. I doubt the Lamenters have any. Now we have the Ragnarok, which is probably the only tank in the galaxy that doesn't require a bunch of tech priests jerking off to an STC with oil lubricant to make. It's basically a shitty but cheap way to make the Lehman Russ, and was mass produced by the Death Corps of Krieg when they ran out of Lehman Russes during the 500 year war. <sighs> you thought the Primaris would only get one unique tank? Nah bro, they get two. Their second being the Repulsor, which once again floats and provides armoured support to the superior Primaris. It's a bit of an all-rounder, heavily armoured, very mobile, can carry troops and has a ton of guns on it. Gone are the days of specialist tanks, when all you need is one Primaris one. Am I right guys? High five. The next tank is a bit of a myth, the mighty Sakarian battle tank, created by the genius of both Ferris Manus and Gilliman using a variety of different STCs. This thing was destined for greatness, it was to be the magnum opus of space marine tanks and had just begun to be rolled out when the Horus Heresy broke out. Due to his position of power, Horus was able to ensure that the majority of the Sakarian tanks went to the Traitor Legions. Because they were designed by the Primarchs, they were super advanced with complex machine spirits. This meant that when the majority of them were used by Chaos and 99% of them were destroyed, the remaining loyalist Sakarians all got PTSD and had to be sealed by the chapters that still own some of them. They are now rarely used and only in the most dire circumstances due to their volatility. Now for the smallest tank on this list. The Siegfried, which is more or less just a glorified tractor with a pea shooter stuck on it. Next up is the largest non-super heavy tank that the Space Marines use, the Spartan Assault Tank. Despite its huge size and carrying capacity, it's really fast and pushes the capabilities of non-super heavy tanks to the limits. It has quad LAS cannons as well as multiple twin-linked heavy bolters, and it can drop off up to a dozen Terminators in a single payload. Nice. There is a bunch of variants of the Baneblade which all start with the word Storm, like Stormhammer, Stormblade, Stormlord and Stormsword. But all they really change is the type of gigantic gun that is used to blow a hole in an entire army or a titan with one shot. Now onto the Triros, which is the Mechanicus' version of a troop transport. It's thick and chunky, but its real defenses come from the energy shields that surround it, allowing it to operate in any environment including the void of space. Nice. Next up is the Trojan, which should be a gigantic deceptive metal horse, but instead is a basic cargo tank which serves to drop off supplies to the front line. Yep, that, that's all it really does. Now onto the Vindicator, which is a basic ass tank with a fat ass short tank cannon. Armed with a big ass shield shovel thingy, I forgot what they're called, the Vindicators make for fantastic vanguard units as they're able to blow up enemy positions then plow through the rubble. Oh, thank god. We did it. Despite a number of tanks using the chassis of a Rhino or a Chimera, the actual vehicles themselves are APCs and do not count as tanks, so fuck you and fuck off. Look, there are other tank variations that have their own names and purposes, like the Glaive, but that's just a Fellblade which has a gigantic laser beam instead of an accelerator cannon, and a Fellblade is just a Baneblade but better, so I hope you can kind of see the copy paste that was going on, and why do you want to waste anyone's time talking about 10 different tanks whose only difference is what colour fleshlight is installed in the cockpit. 
Like I said, if you like tanks that much, then why don't you just go fucking marry them, bitch? And that does it for today, guys. Hopefully by spending an entire day researching and writing about what tanks kill what, we can continue our successful war against the evil One Mind Syndicate. Fuck, I'm good at propaganda. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more tanky content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.